Welcome to Do You Even Lift Bro, a podcast about home gyms, DIY, lifting, and life. This podcast is a production of Garage Gym Experiment, and for those of you who prefer visuals, the podcast is also available on YouTube on the Garage Gym Radio channel. All right, everyone, welcome back to the podcast. As always, I am Matt, and joining me today is Mark from Buffalo Bully Fab. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing well, Matt. Thanks for having me on. How are you? Yes, sir. Doing well. Mark, I appreciate you taking some time away from the fabrication to uh, sit down and talk to me about your business and about you as a person. So uh, Buffalo Bully Fab, what is what is all of this about? Like, how did you get started in the world of fitness? Yeah, so we are a small manufacturer of specialty fitness equipment. Um, we've been doing this now for about three years. Uh, beforehand, I got, a, I got my roots in fabricating uh, off-road race rigs. Fast-paced, high-stress application uh, off-road race rigs, usually Jeep-based. Um, one of which you can see is over my shoulder here. Uh, but then I had an, oppor- nice. had an opportunity to make some fitness equipment for a local gym, uh, and it kind of grew from there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So as far as uh, you personally, have you ever been involved in like the weightlifting side of it, or is this like new to go from the off-road stuff to weightlifting? Like what's your history as far as that? Uh, like many of you, I started lifting, you know, early in high school for me. I don't know if that's early or late. But it wasn't until after college that I, I found my, my true love of the fitness uh, world. And then uh, within the past five, six years, it kind of shifted from typical just weight, general weightlifting to strongman is what I like to specialize mm-hmm. in or what I was training for. Yeah, I had a very strict regimen. I was working out like two hours a week, five days a week, uh, uh, doing strongman training, Atlas Stones, sled pulls, sled pushes. This local gym uh, at the time, you know, strongman training equipment wasn't prevalent Uh, you couldn't just hop on line and order something so you were left at the mercy of local fabricators which i was um so i made some pieces for the gym that i trained at uh i had an i i decided to put a couple up locally for sale and it it just took off from there oh nice nice now you yourself do you have a home gym now i know you've talked like in the past you were doing all this strongman stuff uh yeah so with the the move to the new shop the more space it uh uh, gave me the opportunity to kind of expand my home gym uh, which also doubles as a testing facility um, for me to to know if what my equipment or my products fit another manufacturer's products, I need to have those on hand. So it's kind of a, a win-win for me. Gotcha. Um, but yes, I have uh, I have two racks here. Uh, I have various bars, uh, not so much specialty uh, uh, pieces. I have an axle bar that I that I make and sell. Uh, yeah. My thick grip dumbbells, I have some over there. I do have a camber bar over there as well that I make. I believe I'm the only one that makes a knurled camber bar at the moment. Um, oh, nice. Okay. But as far as, uh, you know, your regular powerlifting bars or, or, or power bars, yeah, I, I, I buy them just like you guys do. Gotcha, gotcha. I was going to say, I think if I had the skill set that you have and I could make whatever I wanted, it's easy for me to say, yeah, I just make anything I wanted. And I was going to ask you, like, is it just – is it easy for you to just make whatever you want or are you like us and you just F it? I'm just going to go buy this, like be done with it. Uh, it depends on what I'm after. You know, I, I can certainly make a bench. Do I want to spend, you know, a few days designing and making one or do I want to just buy one like you guys do? Uh, right. So at the end of the day, it's kind of, I weigh the, you know, the cost versus benefit versus time. Um, right. If, if I can have something shipped to my house like you, and that gives me the opportunity to spend more time in the shop making products for you guys, Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just going to buy the bench and move on. That's a good answer. I, I like that. So uh, kind of going back to your name, Buffalo Bully Fab, like where did you get this from? You, The dog head. I like the dog head. My wife, whenever you first got connected, that was like the first thing. She didn't care about you or what you made. It was like, oh, <laughs> dog head. I like this. You know, it was cute. So tell me about that. Yeah, you don't necessarily equate fitness fabrication with a, a, a bully head, do you? Right. Um, but we're a, we're a pit bull family over here. Uh, we've rescued three to date. We currently have two. Uh, one of which is the, the the face of the company. The logo that you see is one of our current dogs. Okay. We, uh, I wanted to name the company something different that meant something to me. So we were going to oh. name it Bully Fab, Bully Fabrication. There's a couple of companies already in the U.S. named that. Uh, so the girlfriend had the idea of, of naming it Buffalo Bully Fab, basically based on the location where we were, where I started. Right. And it just grew from there. Okay. Awesome, dude. Yeah. And so just kind of talking more about the business side of things. Uh, I know you make a large variety of equipment just based on your Instagram posts and your websites. What would you say like your claim to fame or the product that's kind of put you on the map would be? Uh, well, to date, I think we all know the answer is uh, the Bully Glider. <laughs> um, basically, we we designed a, a trolley 
that uh, attaches to the rack that glides up and down it mm -hmm. um, that you can do uh, uh, resistance training with, cable training with. Nice. Well, that trolley system is really cool. I have one. I was fortunate enough to get in early and uh, I did a review on YouTube as I'm telling you, as if you don't know this, uh, for the people listening, I did a review on YouTube, full review breakdown of everything. It's an awesome product. Definitely. If you have no clue what he's talking about, check that thing out on my YouTube channel. But, um, you said it's a trolley system. What problems, I guess, does it solve as far right. as how it operates? Like what's different from this versus just connecting a cable and, uh, you know, your own little pulley system to a rack and going to town. We sought the, to fix a problem with most of your, your typical pulley systems. Um, up mm -hmm. until our product, really, your only option was a loading pin to a pulley um, mm -hmm. to your attachment. Um, nothing wrong with this problem. It's been used for years, maybe even right. decades. But those that have used it enough know that if you're not careful with how you're, you're doing your reps, basically, the loading right. pin can swing like a pendulum. Um, uh -huh. And then once it gets going, there's pretty much no stopping until you stop. Uh, right. So our goal was to, to design a solution that stopped this way, basically. Yeah. Um, so our first iteration of the glider, which some of you might remember, uh, I think there's still photos on Instagram, was basically a loading pin style uh, glider. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks kind of like an arm that basically attached to a loading pin and just right. you know, glided up and down the, the rack. Uh -huh. um, we quickly realized that a side load option is, is much better in almost all, all aspects. Oh, yeah. um, I quickly yeah. shifted our design focus to that. And that's kind of where we ended up. With yeah, the I completely agree there, buddy. I remember whenever you first, when you and I first connected, that's, yep. that was the product was the, the loading pin, the typical vertical style. Yep. And while it was cool, you did a great job. It looked beautiful while it was really cool. It didn't solve like, I've never really personally had any problems with swaying with what I've done, but, um, it's the unclipping the carabiner and yeah. the top load weight. I hate it. I cannot stand it. And, uh, anyways, I, it was like, yeah, that's really cool. But uh, the side load, man, then boom, you come up with the side load. And it's like, now we're on the money. Freaking awesome. Yeah. So I'm a, you were definitely vocal sure. about your displeasure with, uh, yes, I was, so. I am very <laughs> dis displeasured for sure. I was. And, uh, but no, no, it's, uh, I like the new design a lot. Like I said, um, I've had mine for a minute now. What about as far as your product? Do you have any plans to expand upon it? I know right now it's just the glider itself, but do you have Correct. like pulleys, um, uh, any kind of other, like, what do you got in the works as far as building yep, upon we, this? We do have some pulley attachments in the works. Mm -hmm. Eventually we would like this to be a complete system. Um, we're pushing mm -hmm. real hard to make this a complete system, basically a one-stop shop for a, a rack mounted uh, functional trainer is what we're shooting for. Honestly. Gotcha. Nice. Um, right now it is the trolley only the glider only. Mm -hmm. Um, there are different solutions to get it to work. Um, you've posted some in your videos. I know. Right. right. Um, a few other, of my customers have posted some up. Um, uh -huh. I think we've shared a, a little, uh, some of them, but end game is to have this be a complete cable system. Gotcha. Yeah. No, that, that would be cool. Cause I, like I said, I'm not going to name whose pulley I use, but I use a, another brand pulley at the top and the bottom of mine. I would love to essentially replace those with something from you. I think that'd be cool to have the complete system. Plus, like yeah. you said, a one-stop shop and, and you know, um, yours is obviously going to work completely. It would be uh, it's compatible. Gonna, it's going to be com completely yeah. compatible. Yeah. Synergistically, I guess. So, um, uh, yeah, I like that. No, that's cool. As far as, uh, how many have you sold? This is a weird way to ask this, but I know you did pre-orders. You opened it up, you took a certain number of them, you fulfilled those, and then you opened it up again for the round two. Where are you at as far as those orders? Are you in the process? Have they went out? What's the yep. deal with those? So we're currently working on uh, run number two. Um, mm -hmm. We opened pre-orders back in March of this year. I'm sure everyone remembers. Um, right. Back then, the design wasn't quite finalized. Um, mm -hmm. um, it, that was back when they were gonna be you know, flat rollers. Um, designs right. changed and stuff like that. But, uh, basically our first pre-order run was, uh, just about 50, a little over 50. Um, mm -hmm. our pre-orders at the time were far beyond that. So we were able to, to, to ship out 50 of these gliders. Now we're currently working on a hundred, over 125, uh, gliders. Mm, dang, dude. Um, That's nice. to thank you to fulfill, yep. uh, some of those previous pre-orders, um, uh -huh. all the way up until now we're hoping this, this next run gets us to now. Gotcha. Um, 
And then gotcha. most likely we're going to have to uh, start immediately on run two. Um, if things keep going the way they do and the community keeps responding the way it has to this product. Right, um, right. There's not really going to be any lull in the production process. Yeah, yeah. I will say that was one of the cool things that I noticed when you first released it. The design, although it was the same, it was a side-loaded system or whatever, it was dramatically different. Like you've constantly changed it. And, and the customers, they didn't receive it until you were like, satisfied with it like this is it correct and boom you started shipping them out and uh i did take notice i noticed you didn't change the price or anything they were just someone paid for what they were going to get and you just kept making it better and they yep. got like the best version that's freaking awesome that's the way to do it for sure yeah. so yeah. back when i ordered up pre-orders um, uh -huh. like you said yes uh the price was what i set it at at the time um we updated the rollers the design mm -hmm. uh many aspects of it there was more machining involved right uh, but yeah absolutely those guys got it for the price they paid. I wasn't going to do yeah. anything about it. As far as I was going to say the rollers themselves, that's like, I know it's, we're talking just plastic rollers. Like maybe no one gets excited about that, but I do like them. Like they've got bearings in them. They're super smooth. They are machined from UHMW plastic. Is that right? Yep. Uh, so we, we get in raw, uh, raw rod stock, uh, uh -huh. UHMW, uh, then it gets machined to our proprietary, uh, specs, mm -hmm. um, and the hourglass shape. Um, not many people realize this, or, or maybe maybe some do, um, mm -hmm. but you have two different size steel racks. Right, um, right. So depending on where the country of origin, you could have an, a metric rack or an imperial rack. So, you know, a right. three by three rogue rack and a three rep rack are actually different, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to the thousands. Nothing that you can see, but enough that right, makes some right. attachments fit or not Absolutely. Fit. Right. Um, so the biggest hurdle we had was to design a roller that would fit both. Um, and I gotcha. think, I think I can say, I don't know if you can say it now that you've had one, but I think we, you know, we <laughs> did a pretty good job of doing it. So, yeah, yeah. Well, you've integrated those little set screws into the back too. So we did yep. the, the roller shape in general, it keeps it, you know, centered or whatever. And then the set screws push them, you know, you tighten it up. Tolerances are like, just, you can dial it in exactly how you want it to be. Yes. So, yeah. No, that's awesome. I like that. As far as uh, you are in, I guess, the second batch of the orders, what I know you opened up the second round of pre-orders, and it seems like that was a minute ago. Like, what's been the holdup as far as, like, what's taking you so long to get to this point where you are now? I yes. know that sounds rude, uh, but I don't know how no, to no, ask no. it. <laughs> Not at all. So um, I throw the word we around a lot. Um, uh -huh. you know, we're working on it. We just dropped them off, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, the reality is, is that bully fab, uh, is a one man operation. It's me. <gasps> I do Multiple the design. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously. It feels like it some days <laughs> I do. I do the design, the fabrication, uh, uh -huh. all of the, the drops, the machine shops. I do the customer interaction, the 3d printing. Uh -huh. Um, everything is me. The we is basically my team of people that do help me out the machine shops, the powder coders, you gotcha. know, uh, the girl helps me, the brother mm -hmm. helps me. Um, <laughs> but, at the, but at the end of the day, it's me running this whole show. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately that kind of puts the lead time a little longer. Also relying on other, uh, subs like the machine shops. I'm at the, mm -hmm. the mercy of their lead times, unfortunately, which is usually the case right. on my end. I'm very quick with my lead times, I'm usually right. at the mercy of the others that I utilize. Gotcha. Yeah. That's that. I could see that sucking. Just, uh, you're on top of your game. If they're behind three weeks, you're behind three weeks essentially. So, uh, any plans and bringing all this stuff in house, or at least maybe condensing it, getting down to what you can do here, maybe bringing in some more equipment or something, or actually I'd say what, before you answer that, you've been posting up, you've recently moved spaces, right? Yep. As far as what, what did you, where'd you go from? And then where are you at now? Yep. So we, I started in my two and a half car detached garage, uh, uh -huh. back in the suburbs of Buffalo, it's about 450 square feet. Mm -hmm. At one point you could pull two cars in there. And then towards the end, when I left, uh, it was basically a full service fab shop in a two and a half car garage. Um, gotcha. anybody nice. that walked up to it thought it was the most absurd thing they've ever seen, but <laughs> you know, you have to do what you have to do, but, right. uh, you know, the, the girlfriend and I had an opportunity. Uh, we were talking. Um, we had an opportunity to, to move locations, both personally and business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, house and shop. Uh, so we jumped on it. Uh, we ended up uh, buying a commercial property 
Mm -hmm. that had a structure already on it. So we basically went from a 450 square foot garage to a, a, a little over 3000 square foot commercial building. Nice. So, um, our plans for sure is to utilize this more efficiently. The whole point of this move was to better serve you all, uh, cut down lead times, streamline the production process. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. Eventually we, we would love to get some equipment in here to start doing more uh -huh. in house lathes, mills, uh, all that. Jeez, that's quite the upgrade. So much room for activities. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you, uh, <laughs> to say, do you, uh, so do you, you do plan on possibly in the future bringing in some machines and maybe instead of outsourcing some of this stuff, doing it in house and then that way you can better, uh, control, you know, lead times or whatever. Yes. Yep. That's possibly. the plan. We would love to have those, those machines in here. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. for custom work and for one-offs, uh, design R and D. Um, yeah, that's the goal. Yeah. No, that's awesome. What, uh, as far as now that you've moved though, and you've got all this extra space, what are you doing with it right now? Just kind of running, uh, like you normally would and just kind of, you've got the space or are you, you doing anything different now that you have moved? Like, have you already started implementing anything different into the newly acquired space? Yep. So, uh, I'm lucky enough that this property, this commercial property already had a structure on it. Yeah. Um, basically we were able to segregate the fab shop from the rest of the building, mm -hmm. um, meaning it's it's in an enclosed space within the building to keep dust uh, mitigation, uh, you know, yeah. keep the dust down. Um, it comes with an office and it has uh, another three bay, which you can see behind me. Right. Um, one of the, the biggest uh, perks was keeping inventory in the same building as uh, the fab shop. Gotcha. Uh, at the old place, um, you know, with the two and a half car garage, that was a, a fab shop. My inventory was in the basement of the house. Gotcha. Um, so no, I could see that. You know, those those that live there weren't necessarily happy with my stuff taking <laughs> over both the whole garage and the whole house, but we may do. Right. But yeah, plans to utilize the space a little bit more. Um, like I said, we are we already are upgrading pro, uh, equipment to be um, more efficient. We have a bigger plasma table coming. Um, we upgraded our compressor. Uh, okay. inventory got upgraded. Um, basically everything we're, we're upsizing now to be more efficient. All right, Mark. So we've obviously talked about the glider. I would say that's probably what puts you on the map, not to downgrade anything else you've done, but I would say that's probably like your most, uh, that's, that's probably where most people have like found your page or just become aware of you as the yeah. glider. As far as, uh, everything else you offer though, I know you've got a website. What else do you sell to the public? Uh, so we have a few other products, uh, that I'm, I'm, happy with the outcomes or I'm happy with the design. That's good. We never have to make this company, you know, just another mm -hmm. rack manufacturer or bench manufacturer. That's not the direction that I see mm -hmm. this business going or this company going. Um, we do want to, to innovate on a lot of, uh, fitness ideas. So a few of the other products that we sell, uh, that we're super happy mm -hmm. with are our thick grip dumbbells. Um, Nothing new by any means, uh, but what we've done to them um, right. was certainly new at the time. Um, we were the first ones to offer a knurled, uh, machined, mm -hmm. uh, thick grip dumbbell. Um, and by machined, what I mean is, uh, you know, you and most people in the fitness industry know um, you have your specialty bars and you have your Olympic bars. Your specialty bars right. are Schedule 40 pipe, basically, right. with 1.9 inch diameter. You need special collars for them. Yeah. I didn't want that for my dumbbells. Um, so basically we designed a dumbbell that's mm -hmm. machined on the ends to accept Olympic plates, uh, and use regular collars. So they're machined to that 1.96, yeah. 1.97 spec. I've actually got a pair of your dumbbells and I know what you talked about. Um, it, it does seem like a lot of those specialty items and stuff you had to buy specialty collars for them. And so that was one of the things I noticed when I first got a pair of your dumbbells is, Hey, my normal log jaw collars fit on them and they fit tight. Like it's good. And then the knurling on them is like, it's really aggressive. It's got a good feel to it too. Yeah. So, but I think you and I have talked, you actually, you're swapping knurling, you're, you're, you're refining the knurling process or something. What are you doing as far as that goes? No. Uh, so we recently got our hands on a different knurl. Um, uh -huh. I think you actually have, one of the first things out that, that we, we put it on the uh, close grip. Low row. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, it's a good neural. Ba basically it's the way I kind of equate it is it's a sandpaper feel. Basically uh -huh. you get all the grip you could want without the bite into your hand. Right. Um, right. So we're going to be, uh, the next run of our wrist rollers, 
uh, the next run of our, our thick grip dumbbells. Yeah. Uh, basically, anything neural going forward is going to have this. Um, and the beauty of it is, is even powder coated or coated, it doesn't lose that, that, that feel. Right. Yeah. That, that lower, I use that thing all the time and you're right. It's got a nice bite to it. And, uh, I'm a, like a neural snob. I enjoy a fine knurling and, uh, yeah. maybe I think it's because I was like, I went so long without it that when I first got it and I was like, dang, this is so much better. And it's like, dude, companies can do this. Like, why don't they? It's just at this point, it's yeah. lazy if you don't have a good knurling as far as I'm concerned. So, but yeah, I can attest, uh, it's great. And you're right. It's minor. It's a blue powder coat and, uh, plenty grippy. So I couldn't yeah. imagine it being grippier. A few of the other items that we make that I'm super uh, proud of are our barbell holders. Right, Again, right. nothing new by any means, but on a personal level, uh, you know, when I go to buy a barbell hanger and I'm presented with the option of mm -hmm. mounting on a rack, mounting on a wall, I didn't <laughs> feel like that was something you should have to choose. So uh, all my barbell holders feature uh -huh. the bully hole, as I call it. The bully hole, basically you have a three eighths uh, lag bolt up top. And then below that you have a five eighths hole. Um, it's slotted. So again, it can fit metric and imperial, uh, racks, um, basically allows you to, uh, either lag it to a wall, to a five eighths or a one inch rack. So it, and it comes with a, a, a spacer to go from five eighths to one inch, um, using the same five eighths bolt basically. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I've got one of those and it is really cool. That is something like when I buy barbell holders, which I don't, I don't buy too many of them. I'm on, I mainly use the, um, like the floor stand style. But uh, you are faced with that. Like, do you want something that mounts to a wall? Do you want something that mounts to the rack? Yeah. And then it's like, even if you are set, like right then in the moment, in the future, you might want to put it on your wall or the rack, depending on where you, you know, so it, like you're yeah. pretty much forced to buy another barbell holder, depending on what your needs are, if they change. So that's a cool idea. And uh, those sleeves, the, the little reducer sleeves or whatever, those are 3D printed. Is that right? They are. Yep. Uh, we have three machines that, uh, three printers that run almost nonstop in the shop, uh -huh. um, making, a, uh, various products or various items for our products. Yeah. Um, I know sometimes they can get a bad connotation, um, but when used and implemented right, they're, they're perfectly strong. Right. Yeah. I know the, uh, <laughs> the three printed stuff. I know you've got some of those parts implemented on CD glider and it's, perfectly safe it's literally spacers yeah. like there's no weight it i'm not gonna lie it blows my mind when i see these companies using them for like weight bearing application is like, oh my god you're trying to kill someone that's what it seems yeah. like so going back to the glider now talking about it as we've talked it's a very unique design it's a uh, very innovative when you design something like this and it proves to be successful I mean, it's inevitable. You're going to have like copycats or people that draw like heavy inspiration from it as a business, as a small one man business. How does that affect you? Like, what do you do about that? I mean, you're going to get replications in any industry, uh, mm -hmm. basically on a personal level, it, it does, it stings a little bit, you know, you put all your time, your money and your effort in designing this product that fills a very, you know, it fills a gap. Right. Um, but on, on, on the business side of things, I welcome it. How else can we showcase how ours is superior um, without something inferior, you know? Right. Um, so we, we, we welcome uh, the competition. Yeah, that's a good answer. I, I like that. Just kind of speaking more towards the glider. And I know we've talked about like a little bit of a delay on your part. Any ideas to when you're going to have the most recent orders? Because I know you've gotten people, I'm sure, asking about, hey, where's my glider? I know I've gotten people ask, like, hey, have you heard from Bully? Like any updates or whatever? And that was one of the questions that a couple of people asked me when I pose, you know, do I have any questions for them? What any time frame as to when the newest, most recent orders are going to be shipping and be done? Uh, so we are at the tail end of the second run. Mm -hmm. um, the plates, the sides to the gliders are at the machine shop getting some work done. Uh, when they get back, mm -hmm. uh, they'll be at the shop here for about a day while I weld them all up and then off to powder coat. Um, so this kind of touches in with, you know, relying on the, t the lead times of the, the, the places that we sub to. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we're at the lead time of, you know, the machine shops, the powder right. coaters and that stuff. Um, but we're anticipating hopefully by the holiday, mm -hmm. um, in a perfect world, we would love to ship them out before the holiday. Yeah. Um, but realistically it's going to be about, you know, around the holiday, if not the week after that, we're going to start gotcha. shipping the second run out. Gotcha. Now it makes sense. Well, for anyone that's listening that has an order, I can say it's definitely worth the wait. 
Uh, I, I want to say they've even gotten better since mine. I know I had one of the original sleeves and then you've since swapped, which granted I've already gotten one of the new sleeves or whatever, but uh, you've done some amazing stuff with them too. So I, I personally think they're worth the wait, but I also at the same time I've ordered equipment and I understand like, Hey, my money is now with this person. Like I want my product and you, you know, the longer it is, the answer you get. I mean, it is what it is. So especially when yeah. you got something as cool and I'm probably, honestly, I'm probably not helping it because I'm putting out a lot of content showing what you can do with it. And it's just probably just pissing people off. Like I want to do that with it. So I totally get it. But uh, yeah, it sounds like you've got it under control as far as that goes. So that's awesome. And uh, I've moved before. I know that moves suck. To do that, we're in business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, that's, that doesn't sound cool at all. So, um, yeah. well, as far as I know, we've talked a little bit about pulleys different. Like, do you have any other products that you're going to be like coming down the pipeline that uh, people are excited about or you want to get people excited about? Maybe things you haven't talked about yet? Oh, we have a few items in the works. Uh, Number one of which everyone's been asking about, you know, the, the, the pulley system release dates, you know, to be announced, um, right. but it's in the works and, uh, yeah, our end game is to offer uh, a one-stop shop pulley system, basically, like we talked yeah. about, um, gotcha. we would love to just have a, a, a one, a system that, you know, you don't have to ask if it's going to be compatible, you know, it, it just works. Right. Right. No, I could see that. All right, Mr. Bully. So you have an exciting announcement that you want to make for the people, uh, maybe a giveaway, perhaps. What, what do you got? What, what is it? That's what it is. Uh, <laughs> we decided we wanted to take this opportunity to get the holidays coming up. Our mm -hmm. second run of Bully Gliders is about to ship out in a couple of weeks. We wanted to uh, give back to the community that's given so much to us. So we're going to do a giveaway of a Bully Glider. Yeah. We thought about it. We want the people that have already purchased one to also enter this giveaway. Uh, what we can do is we can either offer them a refund on their purchase price of their glider, or if they awesome. want a second one, we'll just ship them out a second one. Nice, nice. And uh, I believe you and I are going to be joining forces on this giveaway. Is that right? It will be. It'll be a collab giveaway. Yep. Nice, nice. I'm not going to do anything at all, just to be clear. You're going to be doing all the work, but... uh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, this, uh, like he said, he's going to be doing a giveaway, giving away a glider. Uh, so this podcast is going to be dropping on Wednesday, the 7th, and the giveaway is going to be starting the next or the following Friday. So it'd be Friday the 9th. Uh, the giveaway was going to be held on Instagram and, uh, therefore we're going to be creating an Instagram post. It's going to have all the details. So definitely be on the lookout for that. I'm excited. The glider is one of my favorite pieces I would say of 2022, but just in general, it's like one of my favorite pieces in my home gym. I love it. So, uh, I'm excited about you giving this away. I think it's going to be awesome. Whoever gets it is going to be a lucky lad or lady. So yeah, there you go. Well, Mr. Bully, I think I have covered everything that the people have asked me. I've got a, a list here and I've already ran through it. Is there anything else you want to just tell the people listening about you? Uh, yeah. So I, you know, you and I have been talking for the better part of the year, you know, I'm very approachable and stuff. So I'd like to think that as a company, I'm a very approachable company. There's yeah. not many of us that are doing custom fabrication anymore. Uh -huh. um, so it's always the unique stuff that, that I love. That's the stuff that really like, you know, mm -hmm. I see and I want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so if you got ideas or anything like that, by all means, like, you know, shoot us a message, hit me up. Yeah. Um, I love that kind of stuff. I kind of see myself as an open source fabrication shop, you know, it's right. obviously I have my stuff that I need to make and I have, you know, customers I got to answer to, but, right. um, I love the custom stuff, man. You know, I, I got to make that night. I got to make that night. <laughs> I, I was going to say, that's, that's probably the dumbest thing fun. you've made, but it's awesome. It's, it's so dumb, but it's fun. Like I love doing that. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's not practical at all. Like when I was doing that for those reels, if you Instagram reels, uh, it, every time I would like come down. I was always thinking like, if I lose my grip, it's going to sling up and slice my hand. I went, it's like such a stupid, <laughs> stupid idea, but it was great. I loved it. But, uh, and you knocked it yeah. out of the park. That was the thing. You knocked the 3d printed scales and all that awesome job. So, and, um, I know I've got a, I got a couple of ideas I've thrown your way and maybe one of those yep. could become something. We'll see. That's, uh, something we'll to talk about yeah. for another day, but, uh, Definitely got the sure. wheels turning, but yeah, um, I like that. That's awesome. As far as uh, you yourself, you said you're approachable. Where can the people find you at? My main source of, of contact is Instagram right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to have been more active for me than Facebook. I do have a Facebook. Um, it's at Buffalo Bully Fab on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. You can reach us at uh, built at Buffalo Bully Fab. 
um, is our email, yeah. our website, buffalobullyfab.com, obviously. Right, right. Um, but usually Instagram's faster. Awesome. Well, all right, man. Well, I appreciate you uh, joining me, Mr. Bully. And uh, it was fun, as always. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yes, sir. If you don't have anything else, we are done. And uh, take it easy. Take it easy, sir. <laughs> Mess that up. All right. you take it See easy, you. sir. <laughs> take, take it easy. <laughs> take it easy. Yeah. Shut your mouth. Freaking... Michael Scott over here. Yeah, look at this.